Hi, it's nice to talk to you virtually. I want to talk about uh, AI and trust. Trust is a complicated concept, right? The word is overloaded with many meanings, at least in English. There's a personal, intimate trust. Like when I say I trust a friend, that's really about them as a person, not about particular actions. But there's also a less intimate, less personal trust, right? I might not know someone's motivations or know them personally, but I can still trust their behavior, right? That's really more about reliability and predictability. Those are important words. Uh, I think of that as social trust, right? The ability to trust strangers as opposed to interpersonal trust, the ability to trust friends. So both interpersonal trust and social trust are essential in society today. And I think of it as a security mechanism, right? We have ways to induce people to behave in a trustworthy manner, both interpersonally and socially. This in turn allows others to be trusting, which enables trust in society, right? It's not perfect. There are always untrustworthy people, but most of us being trustworthy most of the time is good enough. So I wrote about this over a decade ago in a book called Liars and Outliers, And I wrote about four systems for enabling trust, our innate morals, concerns about reputation, the laws we live under, and then security technologies. And I wrote about how the first two are more informal than the last two, and how the last two scale better and allow for larger and more complex societies. They're the ones that enable cooperation among strangers. What I didn't write about is how different the first and the last two are. Right. Morals and reputation are person to person, right? Based on human connection. And those underpin interpersonal trust. Laws and security technologies are systems of trust that force us to act trustworthy. Right. And they're the basis of social trust. So in the U.S., at least, taxi driver used to be one of the most dangerous professions in the country. And that was changed by Uber, right? I don't know my Uber driver. But the rules, the technology lets us both be confident that neither of us will cheat or attack each other. We're both under constant surveillance. We're competing for star rankings. And those things underpin that social trust. Right? Lots of people write about the difference between living in a high trust and low trust society. Uh, really important literature. But for me, the critical point is that social trust scales better. And that scale is the difference. So you could ask, you know, your friend to deliver a package across town, or you can pay your postal service to do the same thing. The former, right, is interpersonal trust based on morals and reputation. You know your friend and how reliable they are. The other one is a service, right, made possible by social trust. And to the extent that that's reliable and predictable, it's primarily based on laws and technology. Right? Both can get your package delivered, but only the second can become the global package delivery system that is FedEx. But because of how large and complex society has become, we've replaced many of the rituals and behaviors of interpersonal trust with the security mechanisms that enforce reliability and predictability, right? social trust. But because we use the same word for both, we regularly confuse them. And if we do that, we're making a category error. And we do it all the time, right, with governments, organizations, systems of all kinds, and especially with corporations. We might think of them as friends when they're actually services. Right? Corporations are not moral. They're incapable of having morality. They're not people. But language and laws make that an easy category error to make, right? We'll use the same grammar for people and corporations. We'll imagine we have personal relationship with brands. We give corporations the same rights as people. And corporations, of course, like this because they profit when we think of them as friends. And I think we're about to make the same category error with AI. We're going to think of them as friends when they're not. And there's an important through line from governments to corporations to AI. Uh, Charlie Stroh, science fiction writer, he calls corporations slow AI, profit-maximizing machines, and the most successful ones do whatever they can to achieve that goal. Uh, David Runciman, 
He has a book called The Handover, and he makes this point. He describes governments, corporations, and AI all as supra-human machines that are more powerful than their individual components. David Chang, another science fiction writer, he said that our fears of AI are basically fears of capitalism. And if you know the paperclip maximizer, that's basically every startup's business plan. So this is the story of the internet, right? Surveillance and manipulations are its business models. Products and services are deliberately made worse in the pursuit of profit. And we use all of this tech as if there are agents working on our behalf, when in fact they're double agents also secretly working for their corporate owners, right? We trust them, but they are not trustworthy. They're not friends, they're services. And this will be no different with AI. And it'll think be much worse, uh, really for three basic reasons. The first is that these AI systems will be more relational, right? We'll be conversing with them using natural language. And as such, we'll naturally ascribe human-like characteristics to them. And this relational nature will make it easier for the double agents to do their work, right? So did your chatbot recommend a hotel or airline because it's the best deal or because the AI company got a kickback from one of those providers, right? Will it be just like search where paid results crowd out the real results? Now, in search, you can tell but the conversational interface of AI will help hide that agenda. The second reason is power. Sometimes we have no choice but to trust someone or something because they're powerful, right? We're forced to trust the local police. We're forced to trust some corporations. There are no viable alternatives. Or I guess to be more precise, we have no choice but to entrust ourselves to them. And I think we'll be in the same position with AI. In many instances, we will have no choice but to entrust ourselves to their decision-making. The third reason to be concerned is that these AIs will be more intimate. One of the promises of generative AI is the personal digital assistant, acting as your advocate, as a butler to you maybe. And that'll require really great intimacy, more than your search engine, your email provider, your cloud storage system, your phone. You're going to want it to know everything about you so it can most effectively work on your behalf. And it'll help you in a lot of ways. And you'll default to thinking of it as a friend. And you'll converse with it in a natural language. It'll respond in kind. It'll interact with the whole of your person, just like another person. And you're going to want to trust it. It'll use your mannerisms and cultural references. It'll have a convincing voice, a confident tone, authoritative manner. Its personality will be optimized to exactly what you like and respond to. So all of this is really a long-winded way of saying that we need trustworthy AI, where we know its behavior, its limitations, its training, its biases, its goals. It won't secretly betray you, that it's secure against hacking. Right? Remember what I said earlier in this talk, we create social trust through laws and technology. So we need both here. At the end of the day, AIs are computer programs, right? They're written in software that run on hardware, that are attached to networks and interact with users. And everything we know about cybersecurity applies to an AI system, along with all additional security vulnerabilities of AI, like prompt injection or training data manipulation. And almost all AI systems are going to be used in some sort of adversarial environment by which I mean that someone will have a vested interest in what that AI produces or the data it uses, which means it'll be hacked. And when we think of hacks, right, there are three different levels. First, some adversaries are going to want to manipulate the AI's output. Failing that, they're going to want to eavesdrop on it. And failing that, they're going to want to be able to disrupt it. But just imagine, I don't know, an AI being used as an advisor in some international trade negotiation or as a political strategist, or a legal researcher. Someone will want to hack that AI. A criminal, a government. Doesn't matter how accurate, powerful, hallucination-free that AI is, if you can't guarantee that it hasn't been hacked, it just won't be trusted. I think this is all going to happen, though. Right? People will use these systems. People will trust these systems, even though they're not trustworthy. 
And this all speaks to the need for AI security. And that's a hard technical problem because of the way machine learning systems create themselves, right, through training and iteration. It's a problem of confidentiality, right, is the data private, but it's really more a problem of integrity in all aspects of the AI, the training data and process, the model itself, our personal data interacting with the model, our queries into the model, the model's output, right? We need to know that the model is behaving in a trustworthy manner in all aspects of its behavior and with our most personal data. So let's talk about integrity and what that means. It's ensuring that no one can modify the data. I mean, that's the traditional security angle, but there's a lot more to it. It encompasses security, completeness, quality of data uh, over b- both time and space. Uh, it's preventing a- accidental data loss. Right? The undo button is a primitive data integrity measure. It's also making sure the data is accurate when collected, that it comes from trustworthy sensors or sources. It's ensuring that nothing important is missing, that data doesn't change as it moves from format to format. If you think about it, the ability to restart your computer, to reboot, is an integrity measure, right? To return it to a known good state. Integrity is important for personal AIs, but I'd argue that it's even more important for AIs inside corporations, organizations. You can imagine a corporate AI trained on all its data, generating reports, analyzing decisions, taking actions. Privacy is important, sure, but that's always been important. The integrity of that model is critical to the operation of the system. So without it, like everything falls apart. And to me, the internet, actually all of Web3, the distributed, decentralized, intelligent web of tomorrow needs data integrity. Think of peer-to-peer social networking or distributed data ownership and storage and like AI agents. All these things require verifiable, trustworthy data and computation. And in this world, integrity is what matters. And I think this is going to be the key problem, key security problem of the next decade. And remember, it goes beyond preventing data tampering. It means ensuring that the data is correct and accurate from the point of collection through all the ways that are used, modified, transformed, and eventually deleted. Right? Integrity breaches include malicious actions, but also inadvertent mistakes. And failing to guarantee the accuracy of data is an integrity breach. And if you think about a lot of the modern attacks against AI systems, they're integrity violations. Putting stickers on road signs to fool AI driving cars, right? Integrity violation, the input. Prompt injection tax are integrity violations, right? The AI model can't distinguish between legitimate data and malicious input. Any attack that manipulates the training data, the model, the input, the output, the feedback is an integrity violation. And Web3 is all about data integrity. And I think this is a hard problem, right? We've got to build systems that maintain verifiable chains of trust from input to processing to output, uh, authentication, auditing. And it's one that hasn't gotten a lot of attention. So I, I want this to be a call for research into integrity, verifiable sensors, auditable system outputs, ways to test and measure integrity, ways to recover after integrity breach. This is all going to be vitally important. And the last thing is is regulation, right? Even with technological standards, integrity research, the market will not provide the kind of social trust we need on its own. Right? Corporations are profit maximizers, and they're going to build systems to their own interests. It's government who provides the underlying mechanisms for social trust in society. Think about, I don't know, contract law or property law or personal safety laws or health and safety codes that let you board a plane or eat at restaurants or buy a pharmaceutical without worry. The more you can trust that your societal interactions are reliable and predictable, the more that you can ignore the details. And government can do this with AI. Right? We need AI transparency laws, how it's used and trained. We need laws regulating AI safety, laws regulating AI's behavior as a, as a double agent. 
minimum security standards right, for the computers that AIs are running on and, and security for how the model interacts with the outside world. Uh, we need laws that enforce the security and trustworthiness of AI, which means ways to recognize when they're broken and penalties sufficiently large to incent trustworthy behavior. A lot of countries are contemplating AI and security laws. EU is the furthest along. The AI Act was passed in 2024. I think it's a good piece of work, but they're making a critical mistake in the law. They try to regulate the AIs and less the humans behind them. AIs are not people, right? They don't have agency. They're built by, trained by, and controlled by people, mostly for-profit corporations. And any AI restrictions should place restrictions on those people and corporations. Uh, otherwise, we're making the same category error I mentioned in the beginning. And we need one final thing, and that's public AI models. And these are systems built by academia or nonprofit groups or governments themselves that can be owned and run by individuals. And you hear public model a lot, uh, so it's worth talking about what it actually means. I don't mean a corporate model the public is free to use. I don't mean a corporate model the government has licensed. I don't even mean an open source model that the public can examine. Uh, I mean a model that is built by the public for the public with political accountability, not just market accountability, with openness and transparency, responses to public demands, and freely available for anyone to build on top of. Right? The goal isn't to replace corporate AI, but to serve as a counterpart to corporate AI. So we can make never make AI into our friends, but we can make them into trustworthy agents, right? services, not double agents, but only if government mandates it. We could put limits on surveillance capitalism, but only if government mandates it. And governments can define minimum security standards. I think it's w well within government's power to do this. And more importantly, it is essential for government to do this. Because the point of government is to create social trust. Uh, I started this talk by explaining the importance of trust in society and how interpersonal trust doesn't scale to larger groups. That other Impersonal kinds of trust, social trust, reliability and predictability is what governments create. Like I know this is going to be hard. Today's governments have a lot of trouble effectively regulating slow AI corporations. So why should we expect them to be able to regulate fast AI? But they have to. We need government to constrain the behavior of corporations and the AIs they build, deploy, and control. So that's three work streams to facilitate trust in AI. One, AI security, as we know traditionally. Two, AI integrity, more broadly defined. And three, AI regulations to inline incentives. We need them all and we need them soon. And that's how we can create trust in the society that needs it in this new AI era. Thank you.